welcome to the Nerdy Metal Dude channel. I'm a Nerdy Metal Dude, and uh, in the background, I'm going to be playing this for a minute. Okay, in the background, that's this from the short that I put up. Uh, I should have done an unboxing for the box on this sword. I ordered it from Mini Dot Katana. Um, Invictus Blades. Uh, yeah, if. Well, if you want to impress someone right out of the gate, put something in a box like this. You know, like I said in the short, I got the package, it weighed 13 pounds. I thought, did they send me three swords? Why is this so heavy? And, well, now I found out why. Super heavy duty box, all velvety, cloth covered goodness. <laughs> it's really quite nice. And a nice big thank you for the purchase. And it says, uh, uh, 2023 on there so fairly new this Invictus line I guess I tried looking it up uh, mainly they were known for folders uh, and Damascus I guess and mini katana uh, I guess they were mainly known for making little tiny swords and uh, like anime themed swords and things like that and uh, so I'm I'm assuming that these Euro swords Euro medieval swords are well let's go at the slideshow and take a peek because when you assume you make an ass out of you and me <laughs> as you can see cult of Athena had the Bilar arms uh, this is I believe called the uh, 15th century German longsword. Uh, and wow, you can see the similarities. There are lots of similarities. Uh, blade shape and so on. Uh, it looks like the fuller may be a little wider and deeper on this one. I, I don't know. It's really kind of hard to tell. Um, but yeah, and one of the main differences you spot right away is the recessed pummel in on the uh, Cult of Athena version and there's difference in the uh scabbard as well got the scabbard back there i'll bring it out when i get to that point uh but here's another picture where you can see the embossing is different on the leather uh handle is basically the same very nicely done handle i, I really like the handle well done the it's not stitched it's glued but the seam is nice and tight uh, there's no smith mark on the Invictus blade as well, but we'll get into the blade material and so on also. Uh, and here you can see, you know, the end of the blade, the point, uh, the pointy end of the blade there. Uh, better view of the pommel. Cult of Athena's version. Um, so I'm really not sure because Cult of Athena didn't have, you know, the the German longsword in stock it was back ordered and all they had was standard grade back ordered uh, and this sword popped up on my search and that's how it just ended I ended up I was searching the longsword and it popped up and I went to mini katana their website and I said okay and when I looked it over they gave me this description and I was immediately interested in the 1080 because uh, on the Wakefield uh, hangar I got there from Royal Armories, it's a 1080 and it holds up very well, uh, even when you're striking hard stuff like wood. <laughs> uh, so yes, uh, 50 to 55 Rockwell, which is nice hardness. Um, cross guards are mild steel, um, leather wrap grip, the scabbard is wood cord leather cover uh it's got the rain guard and so on oops um, and it, it details all that all this stuff comes in the next one all right so what i did i went ahead and i uh compared it i did a comparison now here's invictus blades uh it's called a 14 medieval longsword and then you've got Bilar arms 15th century german longsword i don't know if this has something to do with oak shot typology but 14s are much smaller than a longsword. Uh, they're, they're shorter. Um, but there's a price differential here. 
so you know even so it's to me it's not a budget sword at over three hundred dollars we're going mid-range for me um but um as you can see the invictus and the Bilar arms very close in weight um i wanted something similar to the albrecht that had a peen hilt and i found this one and I thought, well, 329 is not too bad. Uh, not on back order and stuff. So I, I just went for it. I was like, let's check this out. We'll find out. Who knows? Well, as I went further into uh, Mini Katana's website, they also have other Invictus blades that have analogs with Bilar arms, um, including a Viking sword and some other stuff. So I don't know if maybe Bilar arms, did they sell the designs? I really don't know I'm not going to assume anything until I see some sort of information but I I dug around plenty and I really couldn't find much about it other than Invictus Blades uh, Mini Katana did some sort of a Damascus line with folding knives and such but Invictus has you know several manufacturers under their brand and things like that so uh, kind of hard and hard to figure out exactly where this came from it just sort of popped up on the radar right i don't know especially during the pandemic and stuff well 2023 is on the box so it was post pandemic that they put this thing together i guess with mini katana and invictus or however they worked it out i don't pretend to know the business dealings of it either way the sword okay so we're gonna look at we're gonna concentrate on the invictus anyway because that's the one I cut with the other day during one of my pumpkin cutting sessions I got to know this blade all right and we can see the differences you know the 1080 high carbon which is really nice uh, from what I've been reading 1095 again I talked about it with the uh, t10 on the katana that I bought the thing is is with like 1095 and t10 uh, I heard a lot of similar um, a lot of similar well, I read a lot, of, a lot of similar information on them in that the blades, because once you get up to 1095 and T10, you're talking a brittleness factor with the edge as well, which means you could end up losing the edge sooner because it, uh, it chips versus, you know, maybe deforming with something that is not quite so hard. And 1080 having... You know that 80 indicating eight point or the point so whatever however they do it it's it's the carbon level like 60 65 80 you know more carbon <laughs> i can't remember where they put the decimal in it i haven't had enough coffee anyhow um as we can see again very similar in weight and size and everything the I mean, we're talking an uh, ounce or so, ounce, ounce and a half difference in weight. Very similar in the length. Um, when you look at the point of balance, it's a little bit different, but everything between all these swords, they all fall within range of that historical chart that I got that's rolling down the way. But you can see there's a difference in the thickness but not much in the weight and everything distal tapering is all fine as far as i can tell um, and here's the difference also we're going from just you know 1080 high carbon the, the issue with the 1080 high carbon is you know versus like a t10 is um corrosion resistance and things like that and i think that would be similar here but when I looked similar here with the Bilar arms, having this manganese steel, the uh, thing is, the manganese is, I guess, adding hardness or something, uh, and probably corrosion resistance. But at a 60, uh, 60, I think, indicates the actual carbon content. So it'd be like a 1060 with manganese uh, alloy to it, or in it. And um, 
either way, uh, they should be pretty comparable, I would say, you know, as far as grade. And, you know, again, metallurgy, I'd have to really dig into it. Uh, and sometimes when you flood your mind with so much information, stuff gets, you know, stuff gets missed or you just forget. <laughs> when you get my age, you start forgetting a lot. But um, here, let's move on to the next one. Yeah, again, the distal tapers all fall within these uh, this sample set here for swords of this size and time range. And again, swords were these swords were very similar between the 13th and 15th centuries. Um, you know, a few minor changes, I guess, as you know the as you go later down the timeline closer toward modernity uh you know that's when it went more towards the diamond cross section and thrust centric so this would have been like early long swords um which i like to refer to as bastard swords just because they've got the broader blade uh more designed for cutting as you, you lose your cutting when you start going to this narrower thicker cross section of a uh, of a thrust centered blade all right and here's some pictures of the ones i got and you can see it's uh, very nicely done actually it, it looks great uh if you watch the unboxing you can see how tightly it was wrapped up everything was you know greased up really well um so getting a little closer so you can see the peen end here very very clean and polished over uh, one thing I would the edges here are pretty sharp I mean you know they're not sharp sharp but, but they I, I would have buffed them down a little bit but I can buff them down you know they're not that bad to where you could take it down with like just a little buffer on a drill or something like that you need to work that down so that's fine it doesn't bother me you, if you've seen any of my other reviews, you know, this cosmetic stuff that's easily fixable, I don't mind that at all. It's, that's just something. But this would be more of a comfort thing, too. Not quite so pokey and stuff when you're wearing it on your hip or whatever. But not that. The little cutouts are nice. They add a little bit of decoration to it. And, you know, as compared to the Albrecht, which is the straight bar, then they flattened out flared kind of a little bit of a curve to it aesthetically it's nice and the rain guard is pretty sweet um and here you get a look at the fuller and going towards uh, toward, towards the hill uh, a good look at the tip here as well and here it is compared with the albrecht you can see albrecht's a little bit wider you got the shallower narrower and shorter fuller um, but very similar blade design and stuff like that. And again, I, I prefer to call them bastard swords just to differentiate them from the Talhofer style, uh, more thrust oriented uh, long swords, fencing sort of long swords and stuff. Uh, Alright, we're cutting. Hey, again, it was out on my pumpkin day. I took a couple swipes. Uh, before I cut the pumpkin and that's not bad for a first shot it was a backhand and I took the feet out from under it I let this one go a little because it seems like it's trying to crawl back up <laughs> and there's a, there's a nice heavy soda bottle took it out not static but that's second swing it's not bad I did pay the extra 10 bucks for sharpening just because it was 10 bucks Oh, here we go with the pumpkin. Nicely dismantling the pumpkin, as you can see. I've got other videos <laughs> related to the pumpkin that are coming out besides the rapier. That's just a flurry of swatting at it, swinging around, just trying to get a feel. I'm not really being deliberate with anything here. Just, oh, look. And I happened to get lucky and I got a tester. I took that picture. Here, let's pause. Let's Here's a screenshot. Um, there you go. You go down to the bottom center of the picture. You can see where I struck, where the blade came in and struck the stand. Okay, look at that. 
Oh yeah, and okay, here, wait, pause. Let's see if I can catch the bug. You can see right here, this is where it struck. Nothing major and no deformation of the edge or anything. Edge is quite smooth still. So I, I just chopping and slicing away. I just wasn't aiming at anything. Just having fun, trying to get a feel for it. You know? And it's light, you can feel the difference between this and the Albrecht. Oh, another. Did that actually strike the... No, see, that didn't even actually hit the platform. That was just bad edge alignment there, that's all. I, I twisted it. Here, here's where I was coming in. And there's, you can see where it kind of, whoop. Yeah, just kicked it off. Uh, it's a bad strike on my part. A little flex in the blade there. That was the same bottle again. See, it leaked a little bit after that first hit. But then again, bad edge alignment. I didn't have a good frame by frame on this one. So all I could do is catch it here, but yeah, look at that little bit of a flex. So it's going to take me some time. It's a little different than the Rhinelander. It feels a little different. The end of the blade's a little thinner on this. But there we go, a nice static cut on a 2 liter, which is pretty sweet. Not bad. I kept that one nice and slow too, sort of pretty. I rarely get a good static on a two liter. <laughs> I don't know why they're so mean to me, but uh, there we go. And I actually shaved it off. Yeah. Not even. Took a nice chunk out. And it wasn't a sealed bottle, so I, I, I call that a pretty good one. Where's our guy? There it is. What do we got here? Okay. Oh, now I started trying to line up some shots towards the cap. Over-adjusted coming down. And hit the bottle with bad alignment. And these are tough bottles here, too. They're heavy. What was that? It's like dishwashing liquid or something. <laughs> I got anything I can find. <laughs> but here's, here it is coming in. And again, it's just... Eh. You know, when I bowl, I have a hook, too. Uh, so it's it's just getting used to it with the hook. Because I can throw a bowling ball straight now if I want to. <laughs> I can, and I can strike straight with the Rhinelander, too. So just getting used to it. That was a pretty remarkable hit here, actually. Because usually I pop the lid off of these things. Uh, so what I'm thinking is, actually, there's a lot of force so it's a pretty good strike because there's so much force behind this that instead of the lid popping off because I had it tightened down there real hard it blew the lid apart with the pressure created from the blow that's a pretty good amount of pressure to blow the lid apart like that I would say so I was just a little bit off and it looks like I may have I don't know if I go back a little bit Coming in like this, coming in hot. I may have actually turned it down the other way. It's kind of hard to tell. Eh. So it's just bad edge alignment. But there you go with some water bottles. Not bad. Two of them static. And I didn't polish the edge or anything. And I'll tell you now, the, the edge is a little bit toothy, but uh, I'll, I'm just going to hit it with... The next time I cut with it, I'm going to hit it with the 2500 belt on the work sharp, and that should be just fine, just to polish it off a little bit. But that, with this one too, I slowed it down and kept it going for a long time because there, you can see the shadow. One of the bottles did cut on that back on the backhand. Okay. So now I got a little more serious and was trying for some doubles, but I was running out of targets by then. I used up a lot of targets that day. And I guess I come back. It was pretty slow when I, I could have clipped this together, but I just let it run instead. So that one was pretty slow. Now the next one, you see, I got a little more speed on my next one. Six, that, that, oh. And I didn't clip this the side view or anything. This is all it 
700 normal speed. 0 0.07. That was a pretty quick turnaround on that. Not bad. So, as far as first impressions go, not bad at all. Um, let's take a look at the sword now. I'll bring it up here. Uh, let's look at the scabbard. We'll take a look at the scabbard first. Here you go. Uh, it's got the extra little rain flap. Yeah, you can fold it over or I guess leave it up like this. Either way, it's got a pretty snug fit. Nice snug fit in here. You can see the wooden core. Nicely stitched in the back. Nice and smooth in the front. Got a nice shape on the end. A very nice scabbard. But here's... Here it is. Now... This sword feels very light. It feels really nice, especially being used to the Rhinelander now and the Albrecht at three pounds. They got, they got it tuned in pretty well. Um, let's see if I kind of look at it. There's a bit of a swell, you know, where the fuller ends and we go into the flattened diamond which is pretty standard on this price range, I would guess. Uh, but, yeah, with the shorter fuller and everything, it functions a little, it flexes a little bit different than the Rhinelander. So, it's a little bit of a different feel, but actually not that much different. Uh, because they're so close in weight and everything, too. Um, when I follow up with the... Uh, I'm gonna go out and cut today. I'm gonna to go put an edge on this thing now, and then I'll, uh, I'm gonna compare it with the Rhinelander, actually, because it's more in its weight class and stuff like that. I may bring out the old Albrecht too, just to, you know, just for shits and giggles, and old time's sake. But um, yes, this sword. I'll have to say I'm interested in checking out some of the others after buying this one. I want to cut with it a little more. I always like to do more than one session just to see if things start rattling and stuff like that. Because your first session is always kind of awkward because you don't know the feel of the blade. And once you get a little more used to it, you get a little more comfortable with it, you get better strikes, and you get a better analysis of what it's doing. And again, I'll go ahead. There is a pretty pronounced second, uh, you know, secondary edge bevel on there. But I don't have a problem with it. I'm going to polish it off. Again, I said it's a little toothy, but there's no deformation, no chipping from the strike on the uh, on the stand. And so far, so good with this one. Nothing loosened up. Super tight and nice, clean uh, pommel peen here. Very nicely done on the grip. The grip feels fantastic. It's not too big, not too small. Uh, again, eh, a little point, a little pokey and sharp on here. Yeah, you can buff that down a little bit and it's fine. The uh, finish, it's uh, ground and then it's been buffed a little bit, buffed and brushed a little bit, but so it's, you know, not quite super rough completely ground but it's satiny enough it's got a pretty nice finish then again you know I, I'm constantly cleaning them and you know stuff like that so eventually it'll buff its own kind of shine it still will take on a life of its own if you give it time um, sometimes you can patent the stuff pretty nice too uh, with a little vinegar <laughs> but we're gonna try to sorry I'm going to try to keep the vinegar contact to a minimum. <laughs> uh, am I still recording? Where's my, where's my little bar? I'm going to wrap it up here. I'm just, I've tried wrapping this thing up about 10 times. I'm going to wrap it up here. Uh, I got a couple more pumpkins out there over the weekend. 
I'm going to cut with those today. I'm going to bring this bad boy out so I can compare it with the Rhinelander. Sort of compare it with the uh, Albrecht as well. I know the Albrecht, it's going to be a little harder to compare because of the weight difference. But yeah, we can give it a whirl. I did it with the, with the Rhinelander, so I'll do it with this one as well. But I, already, I got a bunch of targets all saved up. Got a cardboard target for this guy too. I didn't have one last time. So yeah, thanks for coming by everybody. And thanks for uh, thanks for subscribing, new folks. And hey, now rock on, man.